Beams are used everywhere. Every structure that you can think of, bridges, buildings, and monuments are all made of beams. Beams are used not only in the construction of static structures, but also in the construction of moving systems, such as the wing of an airplane, hull of a ship, or the chassis of a truck. Bones that make our skeletal structure can also be considered as beams. Beams play such an important role in our life that I would say that beams are the hidden elements that hold all our structures together. So it is very important for engineers to understand how beams are loaded and how to determine the stresses. Beams in general are long straight members with a constant cross section. I have a steel tube here. Steel tube is a type of a beam. Steel tubes are used in the construction of balconies, railings for staircases, and bicycle frames. Let me show you a box beam. Here it is. The cross section of this beam is a square. These beams are commonly used in general construction and in welded steel frames. I would like to show you a wooden beam now. Here it is. This is a timber beam and timber beams are used in home construction and you can see them in your local hardware stores. Finally, I want to show you an I-beam. I-beams get their name from their distinctive shape. They are also sometimes known as H-beam or W-beam. They are available in a variety of standard sizes. An I-beam strength can reduce the numerous support structures. They can resist shear forces and bending moments. For these reasons, I-beams are the most widely used structural members in the world. Whatever the cross-section or the material may be, beams are designed to withstand loads. These loads can be concentrated or distributed. In a typical beam, loads are applied perpendicular to the axis of the beam. These are all called transverse forces and they create shear and bending in the beams. If the loads are not at right angle to the beam, beams will also experience axial forces. The primary concern in the design of beams is finding the maximum shear force and the bending moment along the axis of the beam. And that's what we are going to do today. We will learn how to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams of beams under different loading conditions step by step. Let's get started. 